Speak Student. It's alive! Oh, in the name of God, now I know what it feels like to be God. Frankenstein a la Schmuck. Getting to know Victor. Is Victor Frankenstein a romantic hero? Yes. <laughs> Short answer, yes. He is kind of the perfect romantic hero. He is brooding. He's torn. Did I do the right thing? Should I go back and help the monster? Like, I don't know what to do. Totally torn. He's like torn up about his family and everything. He also kind of has a healthy-ish sense of self-importance about him, which is another part of the romantic hero. These guys have egos on them. This guy thought he could create life. He, as you said before, played God. Um, he also embodies the romantic hero in that he uh, is inspired by nature. And you know, he kind of has these, he describes and he has these visions of nature where he goes out into it and he, he realizes the sublime. The sublime is, it's actually kind of, has never really been defined. No one's ever agreed on what it means. But generally, it's that when you go out into nature and you get this like awe-inspired feeling that you can't get anywhere else, that's the sublime. And that's what happens when Victor kind of is out in nature and you know, looking out at the bigger world, he gets this kind of sense of it's greater than him. What is a Byronic hero? Um, romantic hero is kind of synonymous with Byronic hero. Um, you remember that name, Byron, Byron from Lord Byron was actually the one who was like, hey, we should write ghost stories. So thank you, Lord Byron, uh, for Frankenstein. Um, and we call it a Byronic hero because it's, it's uh, you know, he kind of created this idea of, of, of the ideal romantic hero. But Different from the Six Million Dollar Man, by the way, for those of you who remember that. Bionic. Keep going. Um, so, as I mentioned all these things before, but who just basically sees the world as bigger than himself, but also is kind of rebellious. Like I mentioned, arrogant, etc. You start to kind of add all of these pieces together, um, and you end up with Satan. So, Romantic hero, Byronic hero, Satanic hero, all kind of synonymous. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in later lessons um, of how, you know, um, we can see the kind of God, Adam, Satan situation playing out in Frankenstein. And that actually makes a lot of sense because Dante would have been a big influence in these writers who were early 1800s. Dante, there's Shakespeare, Dante, Canterbury Tales. There wasn't a lexicography of literature the way there is today where you, you know, have tons of great writers to read. Right, exactly. And it's actually, um, in Frankenstein, the particular influence is John Milton with Paradise Lost. So, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. How would you classify Victor Frankenstein? What is a romantic hero? What is a Byronic hero? Not ironic hero, Byronic. <laughs>